I saw no evidence that there was any technical improvements in anything he did in that fight. It concerns me so much how how often and how easy Joe Joyce gets hit. If the best version of Alexander Usyk goes in there against the best version of Anthony Joshua, yeah. I think Alexander Usyk wins. So that's a fight that we would like to see as well now, wouldn't we? Dillian White versus Joshua. Well, too. I'll okay. do my best. If it, if it yeah. means I can spend some time with you, then... No, I won't be. <laughs> <laughs>
was a psychological rebuild. Yeah. He'd been dropped and dropped heavy yeah. in Zhili Zhang. So from a boxing point of view, is there just as much benefit as him getting the rounds in, getting a result um, that enables him to move forward to the next fight as there is, as, as, as there is in us accusing him of not having advanced the technical ability and dealing no. with the yeah. shortfall of being able to ship punishment whoever throws it. Listen, I think that, um, yeah, there, there's, a, there's an element in truth from the first thing that you said about, you know, him getting those rounds under his belt and, and getting the victory. And that was most important because that installs that confidence back in him. He's got back to winning ways, can move forward. But you look at the flip side of it and you look at Joe Joyce and what his strengths are, which is obviously his strength, his work yeah. rate, you know, his engine. His engine, yeah. And yeah. he just keeps pushing him. But his technical ability isn't there. And I'm not sure it's ever going to be there. I don't think that he can learn that. And that's the concern, like moving forward to the highest level. But let's judge him on his next fight. Now he's got that, that winning formula yeah. back. Let's judge him on did his you next get the fight impression, see where he goes. Did you get the impression looking at him, looking at, the, looking at him through the eyes of a boxer rather than an interested observer, that there was any psychological damage and carryover from the losses to Zhang? Did you get any feeling? Definitely that, not. No? No, definitely not. Not at all? None at all. When he, does he, what he does. He looked, I mean, again, yeah. I hate to be overcritical because I, I really like the fella. But some of the shots that he threw, even one that nearly threw him off balance, yeah. he looked even yeah. slower yeah. and more cumbersome but than I he don't did. Think that, I don't think that was the psychological thing. Right. I think that's just Joe Joyce. And you go, and we must remember, Simon, he's not a spring chicken. No, Although no, he's he turned not. over professional quite late and he's only had a certain amount of fights. You know, Joe Joyce stayed in the amateurs for a long time, you know, and he went through that World Boxing Series. And, you know, he's been around a long, long and time. There is, and the way that he fights is mileage on the clock because Absolutely. he takes punishment. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, there was a there was a lot of um, there was a lot of negatives to take away from that performance. But the positive but, but was the a win. The positive is the win, what? and let's let's get him on from there. We love Joe, by the way. Great character. Absolutely, I want and, I want the very know. best for him. I yeah. absolutely do. Um, let's circle off into another area, and then we'll come back to to Joe in a minute for obvious reasons. We saw Dillian White get back into the ring, um, and obviously Dillian's had a very difficult period of time. Lost a huge opportunity for failed drugs tests, which which have now seemingly been rectified. Although yeah. there seems to be uh, um, some confusion about where he can and can't fight, um, because obviously he's fighting in in, in Dublin, got yeah. a, got license to fight in Dublin. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he stands with the British Boxing Board of Control, despite the fact he's been seemingly cleared of these failed drugs tests. But well, that was the last I heard he'd been cleared, so I don't I don't understand do what I. it is. I don't understand where he is with the British Boxing Board of Control, okay, um, and where he can and can't fight because I'm assuming there must be a reason why he fought in Dublin. I'm, I really don't know. No, right. I don't know if it was just a case of Dillian coming back. That was the opportunity, getting a you know, getting a, a low key fight, trying yeah. to get rid of the ring rust and mm. boxing to put his name back in the mix, which is exactly what he done. I mean, I feel sorry for him. What did you make of his performance? Uh, yeah, so I was going to say I yeah. feel sorry. I, like, what did I make of his performance? He never had enough time to get going. So obviously, he's, you know, he had a bit of ring rust to get rid of. He went out there. He done what he does, working behind a jab, loading up the right hands. He looked very powerful yeah. at times, but. We couldn't really take anything from it because Christian Hammer, who's been around forever, and you know, we, he's, well, he's known fought, to be tough. Yeah, he fought most people, but got, but got beat by most. But of them he didn't as come well. to fight for one. He was very negative, so that makes it harder for the fighter that's trying to win the fight to look good. So he didn't come to fight, and then quits on his store at the end of the third round. Dillian was right in what he's done after the fight. He got he, he, like as the as the ref had their hands, he was going, "You're a coward. You should have come to fight. You don't just come to get the payday." There's, there's paying customers there. People pay good money. Mm. Don't just turn up to run away for three rounds and quit on your store. So I feel frustrated mm -hmm. for Dillian because he never got an opportunity to showcase anything. Yeah. So it was hard to judge him on that because... Interesting yeah. interesting shtick from Dillian because I don't think he did much in the Tyson Fury fight. At different levels, I grant you. I agree. But he didn't turn up in a Tyson yeah. Fury fight, did he? Yeah. When he got his world title shot. So I, I understand his point with Christian Hammer. Hammer's been in with a lot of them, gotten beaten by, 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 by most of them. Yeah. So on paper, it's a credible uh, opponent. In, in reality, as you say, Christian Hammer was there... To get he was, always, he was, he was yeah. there. To, he was a punch bag, basically. He was always there for Dillian just to shake off the ring rust and then put himself back in the mix. And you go, the obvious one, Joe Joyce just comes through a fight. He's coming off the back of that well, loss. Well, this Dillian is the circle back now. Yeah. I, I said it a moment ago. Obviously, there was a mention from both fighters, I think, of one another's names. In terms of this fight being made... Where does the winner go or something like that? Or, yeah, who's yeah. the biggest beneficiary of the fight being made? Yeah. Because ultimately, That's you've got Dillian White coming back into, into contention as a result of a failed drugs test and now a clear, clearing of his name, and that's the rebuild journey he's got to go on. And Joe Joyce is coming back from two distinct beatings against um, Zhili Zhang. Yeah. The main beneficiary of this fight being made would probably be who? 
So, I think it's a crossroads fight, if I'm totally honest, Simon, for both of them, because they're at that level and at that age. A career-ending fight for one of them? We, the reason I say career-ending fight is because they're, they're, they're of that age where the rebuilding process is going to be really hard, and, and that probably takes them out of that top-tier level, and do they still want to compete at that? I'm saying the winner, this is where I see this, with the landscape, with this Super League that's going on out in Saudi and where fighters are being positioned and where fighters are getting made, I see the winner of the, if that fight is made, which I think is a great fight because it makes sense for the reasons you just highlighted for both of them, the beneficiary, I think, goes on and fights possibly Anthony Joshua in the next fight, maybe for the vacant IBF, depending on what happens with these titles. Wherever did, this... did, Joe's the more diminished fighter, isn't he, in terms of perception? Dillian White is diminished by association because of the failed drugs test, right? But Dillian White was, was the, the most overlooked heavyweight for a period of time. Yes, yeah, sure. The most maligned one that constantly get put on the back burner for heavyweight title shots and different arguments have been put forward that actually he could have had heavyweight titles. He just, he just didn't take the money that was available at the sure. time. But there was always that. Now, he loses to Tyson Fury. The next opportunity he has is, is Anthony Joshua and that situation goes the way yeah. it goes, right? You think that... Um, Dillian White versus Joe Joyce has, is a fight that has lots of credibility and lots of intrigue. Yeah, and lots of meaning because the winner obviously goes on and the loser then at this stage of his career, probably we may not see again, especially at that level. Who do you think um, comes out of that fight victorious? Who do you think is most likely to? I, I would think Dillian White. I'm with you on that, actually. And, and, the re and the reason is because it concerns me so much how how often and how easy Joe Joyce gets mm -hmm. hit. And that's a big problem because what's Dillian's shot? So he loves that looping right hand, which we saw in, in, in his fight against Hammer. Loops it over with Does he power. carry enough power to stop, stop Joe? Oh, absolutely. That yeah. left hook is devastating, yeah. Lucas Brown. Yeah. Lucas Brown. Do you remember Lucas Brown? I mean, that left hook he hit Lucas Brown with, like, yeah, that's devastating shot. So the answer is yes, he has the power to win. Do you think it's a fight that will get made? I don't see why not. I think it's a great fight. And by the way, I think that fight happens on British soil. I don't think that would happen out in Saudi. Yeah, I, I think that's a, that's a fight that happens in the British soil and then you get the winner, puts his way into mix. I think that's a perfect segue into this big mix. Do you think the risk-reward position is there for both fighters in terms Definitely. of... Yeah, you yeah, do? Yeah, because Simon... Because it's career-ending for one of them, isn't it? Yeah, but, but also, where do they both go at this stage? What I'm saying is that you're, they're both at the stage now where they need to be thrown in the lion's den and, and but Dillian doesn't need to rebuild, does he? D Dillian needs to rebuild his reputation. Joe Joyce needs to rebuild. Yeah, but in, in, well, I would say Dillian does have to rebuild, really, because he's coming off that humiliation, and that's probably what it was against Tyson Fury. So, you yeah. go, so he showed a gulf in levels there. Sure. You go, so he does have to rebuild in some aspects. Mm. You know, okay. I, I think it's a perfect fight for both of them. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, the, the more activity we get for the best heavyweights around and the more fights that we see, whoever makes them, however they get made, um, you know, um, will be good for the division and good for the engagement. Yeah. A lot of tough people observed about the commentary that was made and has been made through people like ourselves, specifically you, because you're the head of his fan club, about <laughs> Anthony Joshua <laughs> and his achievements over the last 12 months. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it in, in the broadest terms last week and in detail, not in the broadest terms, mm -hmm. in detail, about Anthony Joshua's journey in the last 12 months. And I wrote an article in the newspapers suggesting that because of what he did, no, stating that what he did was reassert himself back as a potential national treasure. Yeah. Primarily, not because I think a sportsman should be a national treasure, but because what he did for heavyweight boxing was give it some credibility back yeah. uh, by dealing with an MMA fighter the way that a so-called elite heavyweight fighter should be able to deal with him. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people uh, I have seen make observations that we're giving Anthony too much credibility for the last 12 months, given the fights that he's been involved in and who he's fought. Yeah. You know, whether it be Jermaine Franklin, whether it be Robert Hellenius, whether it be Otto Wallin, and ultimately with Francis Ngannou. Mm -hmm. uh, and that irrespective of all of that, all of the, of the, of the hype that's gone around Anthony in the last week, he still behind Usyk and behind Fury as a fighter. Yeah. Well, you know, the, he's always going to be judged on that because of the, the, the defeats to Alexander Usyk. So, you know, I can understand what they're, what they're saying, where it's coming from, but you can't, un, you know, you can't, what's the word I'm looking for? You can't not respect 
Anthony Joshua and his journey since those Alexander Usyk defeats. I mean, you've got names up there. Otto Wallin is a credible opponent. Jermaine Franklin, all right, you've got to allow that for the rebuild. You know, that, that's part of the journey, coming back into it. But like, you know, Robert Hellanius, flattening Hellanius the way that he did. I think it's, you know, I think the journey's been more than respectable. And, and I think he's regained that credibility because I'm not talking about the victories. I'm talking about the manner in the victories. I'm looking at Anthony Joshua and what he's doing differently. You know, you're looking at him and saying, well, you know, that adaptability, you know, that, that confidence in his own self-belief again, stepping in with his shots, throwing the combinations, well, the, 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 puts him in the mix. Well, I, 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 his promoter, Eddie, turned around and said that you're now looking at the best heavyweight in the world. Yeah. To some extent... Eddie will say that, though, because well, I, obviously... I understand yeah. that, but there has to be a degree of credibility about what you say, because mm -hmm. otherwise, you, you, you know, you can say what you want and never be accountable for it. But are we beginning to lose sight of the relevance and... Uh, uh, the superiority that Usyk has shown in recent times, given the fact that now people are be they, 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 people are beginning to really think that Usyk yeah. is going to beat Fury. They've seen him beat Anthony Joshua and they saw him beat Daniel Dubois. Right. So is there not a danger that what's happening in people's minds is Anthony Joshua bangs back, Anthony Joshua is going to go and do what Anthony Joshua does, which is reclaim his belts, mm -hmm. and that somewhere along the line you're starting to marginalise the sort of superiority that you know, that Alexander Usyk showed in the two fights he had with Anthony. Sure. Well, look, this is not coming from the Anthony Joshua fan club, by the way, when I say this. We see the improvements and, and, and you know, Anthony Joshua reinstalled some of that stuff that was there and which took him to the World Heavyweight title. Now, let's go back to Alexander Usyk and the performance against Daniel Dubois. I saw a lot of vulnerabilities around Alexander Usyk when we was out there, when we was commentating. Not just with a body shot, the couple of times where Dubois was putting it on him and he didn't like it after the body, after the body shot or the low blow, or whatever you want to call it, went in. That moment when he went through that, there was a lot of vulnerabilities around him. And when, when Dubois put it on him, he really didn't like it. The Anthony Joshua that boxed Usyk back then, this guy is a, is a better version, the Anthony Joshua of now, which gives him a realistic chance of but beating you, him a third I mean, time. If, but if a heavyweight, if you're talking about world level fights, yeah. there is going to be moments of discomfort. And aren't you, aren't you elevating that to suggest no. that somehow there's weaknesses no. in Usyk? Usyk, Daniel Dubois got a few digs in and, 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 and had some chances, but he was outclassed for most oh, of the fight. Oh, absolutely. I know I agree with you. But what I'm saying is that I saw an air of vulnerability around him where I go, look, I think that Anthony Joshua right now could exploit that, whereas he couldn't in the first two fights. I think he's a more improved fighter and I think that makes him dangerous. I mean, let me flip that to you. Alexander Usyk, Anthony Joshua goes for a third time. He got closer yeah. last time. Yeah, no. Do you think he's? Do you think he could pull it off on the third one? Uh, I think it will be difficult. But do you, no, but um, do you no, think no, I'm asking you a question. I'm just not yeah. going to answer it the way you I want me. To. What, you, you. what you want me to do is answer it and say I'll... yes, yes, Anthony Joshua. No, right? I'm asking but, you. But, but I'm but, asking you what you think. Well, it depends what Usyk goes into that ring and depends. <laughs> no, hold on. Qualifies it. If, if the best version of if the best version of Alexander Usyk goes in there against the best version of Anthony Joshua, yeah. I think Alexander Usyk wins because I think he's got the I think the psychological challenges that Anthony will have to go in to mm -hmm. fight someone that's already beaten him twice and beaten him compellingly in both fights. Yeah. Right. And irrespective of whether he got closer. Uh, and whether we, we still haven't answered the question, we still not had the question answered yeah, that Anthony Joshua will respond when he has to get taken into dark places. In none of these fights, besides the fact he's, that he negated Wallin, mm -hmm. he did his job against Ngannou, which made Tights and Fury look ridiculous by association. Yeah. He did what he could do against Robert Hellenius, who didn't come to fight the same yeah. way he came to fight De Deontay Wilder. Mm -hmm. And the first fight against Jermaine Franklin caused concern for all of us, right? So the Jermaine Franklin fight is a, is a distant memory. Yeah. But we still haven't asked, had the question answered of Anthony, when he gets taken into a dark place, what happens to him? Right? And if the answer to that is that because he's changed his thinking, because he's now more comfortable and confident in his skin, yeah. he's got a trainer that's working him out psychologically and he's prepared to put himself in range so he's overcome the mental demons, then OK, the answer will be that he can take a shot. He can be prepared to, to go to dark places. But I think stylistically, I think Usyk is a superior fighter. Yeah. And I think that is a challenge that Anthony isn't going to overcome. Um, and, and, the, and, and, and of course we've got the argument that the very thing that he should have done in the first fight is maybe the very thing that he would do now, but I don't think he can execute it against Usyk. Well, it's, if listen, Usyk is you, on the top of his got, game. And you've got a great point because... And like, it's not because I don't want him to, no. by the way, because I do. I'd like to see Anthony Joshua as a British... I'm proud of him last mm. week. I was proud of the way he dealt with the media. I was proud of the way that he dealt with the MMA fighter. Yep. And I was proud of the way he dealt with the media afterwards, if, if my pride in him means anything to him and his gang. But sure. I think I've been critical about him, so I should also be praising. But I doubt, 
I, I doubt. Well, you, you, you make great points, Simon. The reason being, because we talk about when you're talking about Dillian White versus Tyson Fury, and you say, was it that Dillian was really bad or was it that Fury was so superior that he controlled the space and took everything away from Dillian White? So that leaves that question there. Well, well, that you, well I, no, let, me, let, me start, let me just, let me just address yeah, that for on. a second. When Dillian White walked into that press conference, I stood next to Jim White mm. and went, he don't think he can win. Yeah, yeah. That's a psychological, psychological approach yeah. as well. As well, well, as well as a technical that, deficiency. That leads us on to Joshua Usyk free. If that fight ever does happen, it doesn't matter if Anthony Joshua's got that old fire back or not. If Usyk is too superior, then we've got a big problem. But that's what we have to see. But so I'd that, like that, to, I would like to see that. I would like to see that question uh, answered. Uh, absolutely, I that would. leaves that open. Yeah. So that so, going back to this again now, Dillian White, Anthony Joshua. That's then because that is someone that will fire back. That is someone that we will get the answers from because yeah. stylistically they go so well together. So that's a fight that we would like to see as well now, wouldn't we? Dillian White versus Joshua. Well, too. yeah. I mean, ultimately, if we're going to fight, if he's going to fight um, Joe Joyce, it might be something that excludes no, himself. No, I'm just from saying. If you, that's why I said yeah. that, that little love triangle. Yeah. There. I mean, you can then talk about Daniel Dubois. Yeah. Love triangle. <laughs> You and triangles. Uh, I wonder what's going on in your mind. Uh, I dread to think. Um, where does Daniel fit in all this? I mean, Daniel Dubois. Um, right, we'll as make we, it a square and put Daniel yeah, Dubois in there. Yeah, next to it will be a hexagon. <laughs> yeah. um, where does Daniel Dubois fit in the yeah. equation? You've got, you've got, you've got Joseph Parker tied up with Jilly Zhang, which, by the way, I think is unfortunate because there's nothing in that. I mean, I guess they had to sign a, a, yeah. the rematch deal to get the fight in the first place, but he's done with Zhang. That's the problem with rematch clauses, yeah. 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 And it's, it's, it's found its way into boxing because of the financial benefits of it, I suspect. Well, yes, yeah, it's, 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 the, it's the insurance, isn't it? It's the insurance mm. for the other fighter that's putting their mandatory yeah. position on the but line. But it never used to be, did it? But no. there we are. No. There we are. But there we are. But so, where, where for Daniel now? Well, obviously, he's re in lots of people's minds, including his trainer, Don Giles, yeah. he's rebuilt his reputation. I mean, he should have beaten Gerald Miller. Yeah. He should have beaten him. Yeah. Right. And the only question was, was Daniel in the right frame of mind after the defeats, uh, after mm. the defeat to Usyk? I mean, he showed character in that yeah, fight, didn't he? And, he? He dug deep a couple of times. He and, showed character. But so where does Dubois sit in the equation? Does Dubois, oh, like, do, 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 do you think Dubois should try and take Joe Joyce now, given that Joe no, Joyce is I, fragile and, is, and, like redeem, see, and redeem himself for the fight they lost? I'd like to see Dubois in with someone like Philip Hergovic or someone of that sort of stature. Mm. Another guy that's there or thereabouts. So I think that Dubois sort of earned earn the right to challenge someone like that. Because of this heavyweight situation with the undisputed, we don't know where the titles are going or whatever. Philip Bergovic, Daniel Dubois, great fight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I would prefer, to, I have to say, to see Daniel clean up his record by maybe fighting Joe Joyce and beating Joe Joyce this yeah, time I like around. that. I like, I mean, I went to the fight itself. I was, I was so surprised at how uh, unsure Daniel seemed to be when he walked into the ring. And I think perhaps now, with a different trainer, a different mindset, a few more miles on the mm -hmm. clock in terms of experience, that Daniel um, would potentially right the wrong against Joe. I mean, yeah. it appears like I'm writing Joe Joyce off in every conversation. Do you know what? I don't want that to be the case. There's another great pairing there, because like you say, that that's a great fight for um, yeah Daniel to right the wrongs of the last fight. You put them into that, them two in. You go Anthony Joshua versus Dillian White in a rematch as well. I mean, there's two good. What about Deontay there. Wilder? Deontay Wilder, where does he fit into the mix? Now, he he's just comes with the reputation, doesn't he? Like, from the last performance that I saw there, it wasn't a bad performance. That, that looked like a guy that was a shell of his former mm. self, a shot fighter it wasn't a bad in many ways. It no, wasn't, it was no, it wasn't just down to the fact that it was a bad performance on the night. That, to me, said that that was a, that was a guy that yeah. was a shell of his former self, a yeah, shot Deontay's fighter. left the room. It was a yeah. terrible yeah. performance, yeah, I'm saying, but that's not the reason he just had an off night. I think that the fight had just left him, basically. Right. So he comes with now just the name for me. And I think that any of the top tier heavyweights that you put him in with, he gets beat. So you don't place Deontay Wilder on the list of things. I, pl I place him. I place him on there because he comes with great, great reputation, yeah. a great name, and obviously he's got a punching power. But now I just I looked at that performance last time. And I was like, wow, I couldn't believe what I was watching. The debate is being had, I think, by certain sections of the boxing fraternity, that it's wonderful that we're getting all these fights. But there is a feeling, and I sort of guess you can't please all the people all the time, mm -hmm. that all the big fights are going to be held in Saudi now, which means that fans that can't afford to travel to places like that, it yeah. puts you in a category of super fan if you can. And do you think that's um, debilitating for British boxing? Or do you just think it's the nature of the beast? All the big I, fights went to Vegas and they went to Madison Square mm. Garden once upon a time. It's the nature of the beast. Like, you know, we know that there's this like Super League, if you want to call it that, out there at the moment with the heavyweights, the big names in, of the heavyweight division. But that doesn't mean we're not going to get big fights still here 
in Britain. You know, we know with the investment of Saudis, they're going to take those big fights. That's great because the fighters are getting paid. We still see it. Maybe it's not cost effective or whatever it is, but we'll see how that goes. But if you look at some of the fights that will be made, which I believe could be made on this show, you go like Daniel Dubois versus Joe Joyce 2, yeah. that's a fight. Adam Azim versus Dalton Smith, another great fight, British, European sort of level. You go Chris Billum Smith versus Richard Riakpo, mm -hmm. that's a stadium fight. It's either, you know, Sawyer's Park or you go back to the Vitality. That's a fight that Joshua we have seen. Anthony Yard. Joshua Boetzi, Anthony Yard is the fight that I was getting to. That is a huge fight and that happens here, by the way. Yeah. I, believe, I truly believe that. So, you know, there's lots to look forward to for British fans, but I think for the... Um, for the for the benefit of the sport of boxing, the Saudis coming in and, and you know their involvement and investment into the sport, we are getting the big fights that maybe we would have never seen, Simon. Well, the only reason the, the, when the guys were well, well the only reason there. I say that is because perhaps people have been not so much spoilt but become accustomed to seeing, you know, you know Wembley Stadium being yeah. utilised yeah. for Tyson Fury fighting Dillian White or Tottenham Hotspur being utilised to see Tyson Fury fighting uh, fight, fighting um, uh, Derek Chisora. Yeah. Did you see Derek Chisora and that nonsense last week where he's handing out five guys trying to promote his miserable franchise yeah, yeah. at the same time as trying to pick a fight with uh, Michael Jarman? <laughs> he's a busy little son. And you know, he's a saucy son. He was talking about what people says and what courage, but never pays his bets. <laughs> I don't know how he dares pull anybody up. He told me last week, I saw him last week actually. He mentioned you. <laughs> it was particularly nice. I think get the. Oh, by the way, he made me die and he said about people being critical and saying that Simon was. He was pretty quick to come on the phone to me going, yeah. oh, I think I've upset Frank Warren in that interview no, I did with you. Yeah. Can you phone Frank for me? You forgot <laughs> that, didn't you, Derek? I didn't. <laughs> I think, yeah, he mentioned to you, tell your mate to get back in his box or somewhere around yeah. him sort of oh, oh, I mean, well, I'm happy. He's happy for me to get out of my box. Uh, I've really upset Frank. He's told me I can never come to one of his fucking fights again. <laughs> Frank, what's he done? Oh, he's done? Oh, OK, fine. By the way, didn't you just get Derek another payday on something else that you're involved with? Yes, yeah. indeed. Behave yourself, Derek. Yeah. <laughs> He'll drop you. Such ingratitude after all the things <laughs> I've done to save your life. Right. <laughs> On the weekend, we saw The Magnificent Seven. Yes. And, and I think the feature, for me, the feature performance out of that was Liam Davis. Brilliant. Uh, you know, I, I think that he's, if he hadn't already announced himself in terms of the, the quality that he has and mm -hmm. the ability that he has, he certainly did in that fight. Absolutely, Simon. You know, he goes, you know, he's He's got that IBO world title now, former European champion. Gone well under the radar for me. Yep. I, like you, I think that he is one of the best prospects in the country. And he's sort of like, yeah, for, for some reason or other, it's not really captured the public imagination yet. Well, he went in with an opponent that a lot of people thought he was going to lose to, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and he went out there. Him. And he blasted him yeah. out there two rounds. I thought yeah. it was a demolition job. Yeah. He put himself right up in the frame. And, you know, um, I thought it was a great performance. So it was is one it? of those that I go... That he, it was a coming of age fight for him in many yeah. senses because I think the public actually looked at him and thought, wow, this kid is brilliant. Well, he's 27, isn't he? So he's at the time now yeah. where he needs. Is it just given you thought of that weight class? Mm -hmm. And obviously, time has moved on, but, but notwithstanding it, it still appears to me that the, 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 the lighter weight classes seem to get less focus, less recognition, and travel beneath, beneath the radar so regularly. Yeah. And that you need to be a real. Showman superstar it's a part, like it's Nazim to uh, Hamid to come out. Yeah, it, like it? When, when you're the smaller guy, like you know, we, we know that all the focuses are the casual fan know the heavyweights, and you might, you know, going down to sort of middleweights, you get that. Mm. That's for the casual fans, the, the non boxing fan, if you like. When you get the smaller guys, you know, for, for the more, more for the purists, I think it's all about the personality, how they conduct themselves mm. outside of the ring, because we live in a world of showmanship, you know, it's all about that social media presence, you know, being good, being able to talk. So, if you're only good in the ring, it's going to take you that, that much longer right. to, to capture the imagination. I think he done that, actually. It feels wrong, that. It feels it, that boxing, oh, it's totally wrong. The, the boxing should do a little bit more. I mean, totally the, the heavyweights wrong. will always get the attention. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, some of the best fighters and some of the best fights and some of the best achievements are lower down the weight classes. Definitely. And, when they, and they don't get the credibility and the mm. credence and the finances that they should get. Yeah, I mean, another guy that had a win on there, actually, Dennis McCann, who was another great young fighter. They're both, both undefeated. That's a fight that I'd love to see. Dennis McCann versus Liam, you know, Liam Davis. That's a brilliant fight, both under the Queensbury banner. How long do you think it will take? I mean, if Liam is to be successful and to, to win a world title, how long do you think it takes for him to get a shot? And do you see him, given the guy that sits astride that division, across all the belts in Anui, being someone that, that Liam can... Take a belt, take the belt. Well, from. listen, I, I know right now, and, and the people that are you know, watching this will, will, will be thinking there's no way, and Nui's like, yeah. 
miles yeah. miles ahead. Well, yeah, actually he is, but it's all about development, taking time. Liam Davis only had 16 fights, and I think that every time you win a different title, he's now IBO champion, he's been European champion. I think it sort of elevates him to another less level. Let's talk about it. If you look at a young Manny Pacquiao, where he started out and where he ended up, you would never have believed that he would have gone there. So he's on that journey right now. I knew he's arrived to where he is, and that's the finished product. Do you know what I mean? He's not. Yeah. That's, that's where he's at. But I, they ask me that question in another... I'm, I'm, you can talking about, what's he, 27 years of age, Liam Davis. You go, you're looking at him going, let's wait until, you know, give him another 18 months, see where he's positioned then. But the potential there is incredible. You know, I think he has star quality about him, definitely. When you look at him in that ring, yeah. you look at his last couple of oh, performances. Yeah, quality you go, was great, wasn't it? Quality yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah. You know, the, 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 you know, everything about him I like. So, listen, it's a, that's the fight that he's obviously chasing. It was a good event that they put on. Yeah. And top of the bill was Nathan Heaney. What did you make of his performance? Well, do you know what? I, I, I took a lot more from that performance with Nathan Heaney because he showed a, a lot of character in there. He showed, a, a, you know, a, he showed a lot, a lot of character. Brad Paul's would like sort of pull it on him at times. And there were times there he thought, he's going to come undone here, you know, and it shows it and, and takes a lot of character for a fighter to be able to bite down and sort of put those bad rounds behind you. And he's sort of done that and he's done what champions do. Never got disheartened. He, he, he sort of weathered a few storms. Great fight. It really was. I mean, it was worthy of a draw, really, because both guys had that success. Heaney maybe considers himself a little un unlucky, but it's a fight I'd like to see again. But now you look at that and you go, from Heaney's point of view, you go, don't want to go over old ground there because that's the style that doesn't really suit me. I've got, I've got away with that one. The boxing gods were maybe with me slightly. I like like Tyler Denny, who's a European champion. Boxer card, let's, let's get promoters working together, get, get that fight on Heaney versus Denny. You know, that's that's where he sort of sat. That's where I, that's the the roadmap yeah. for him, really. Because otherwise, you're talking about Liam Smiths, Eubank Juniors, those sort of names. You go, well, maybe just not yet with that. Let's sort of move slowly with him. But I loved that fight. It was great. Mm. Before we finish, and we're going to talk about a couple of other things. But obviously, we've got some fights to look forward to coming up at the end of this month. We've got Fabio Wardley um, fighting Fraser Clark. Yeah. And obviously, we've got the fight um, in Leeds between um, Josh Taylor yeah. and Jack Cattrall. So we've got two big. I mean, I was making the observation. reason why I bring those up because I was making the observation about big fights and fights yeah. that the British public would like to see being abroad. These are examples of fights being fought yeah. in this country, and sp specifically Josh Taylor and Jack Cattrall, given the level that that fights at and the interest. Yeah. yeah, no, actually, yeah, no, it's been postponed. It's been put back. It's been put back a month, actually. What? Yeah, to May. Just for, for, yeah, down to medical grounds from Josh you know Taylor. Yeah. So apparently, a problem with the eye. Or something. Mm. There was a problem with, with his eyes. Yeah, some down to medical grounds anyway. Okay. So he's asked for the fight to be pushed back another a month. month. Yeah. Okay. It well, is what it is. A month, isn't it? Yeah. Four weeks. Yeah. It seems that a fight that I don't know what you think about it, but this fight seems to be cursed in many ways because it's been on. Yeah. It's been off. It's been over two years in the making. Let's hope we get that because it's a great fight, like Absolutely. you say, Simon. Absolutely. It's a great fight. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm 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 looking forward to it. Um, and I, you know, I, I said to Noel Gallagher, who wants to go to the fight, this is going to be a great fight. So I was going out there with him, so I'd have to let him know that it's been postponed till, till May. That's a terrible name drop, wasn't it? Um, anyway, yeah, I, I was it wasn't meant to be. I was thinking aloud, and, and now I look like a top You're saying there, mate. Right? That probably don't, oh, need, yeah, any, I don't, there, I don't need any help with that anyway, probably. Um, <laughs> the last part of this show that I wanted to talk to you about is Ryan Garcia. Yeah. I, I, have a, I, have a, I have an intolerance of Ryan Garcia because I, don't, I think that there's a lot of noise there without, without as much substance as people would like us to believe that there is. I can't get past Carl Froch's observations about, uh, and my own eyes, about the fights with Tank Davis where he doesn't appear, appear to want to get off the, off the uh, canvas in terms of getting a, some very heavy body shots, but notwithstanding it, he was able, able to get himself listen, up when he I, needed to. When you look at that, with that body shot, and I stand by this as well, and he goes down, he's looking, he's watching the, calf, the ref count, I know when you get hit with those body shots, you you getting up from them shots. When you're on one knee and looking at the referee, you can get up from them shots. Yeah. That's a personal he decision that to. you make, yeah. not that the fact that your body won't allow you to. Look, you see body shots when you go over, and you got to be rolling around. But on the, the reason floor why screaming. I bring Ryan Garcia up, there's been some social media stuff of yeah. him crying, right, uh, and seeing certain stuff. I mean, I don't know what you make of that, and whether he's whether you think he's any fit condition to be either allowed. Or putting himself in the way of fighting Devin Haney. He 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 have a, he has a history of mental health problems. I think that goes back. This is not the first time this sort of happened. And, and if you ask me, is he mentally right right now? And should he be going in the fight with someone like Devin Haney? I'd say definitely not. I think that his behaviour on social media has been very erratic. He's been very out there. He's just been behaving in very strange ways. And I just think for the 
for the sake of the sport of boxing and the reputation of the sport of bo boxing, God forbid if he went in there and something did happen to him and got injured, that would put boxing into disrepute. You go, you're allowing this kid to go in there, you look at the history of, you know, the social media tweets and these outbursts. I mean, that emotional breakdown that he's just gone out there and he's standing and he's crying and he's talking about God and this opportunity. Yeah. You go, that kid is no, in no mental state to get in a boxing ring right now. So the answer is no, I, I don't want to see him fighting. For, and that, and that's It'll be interesting to see if, if, the, if, the, if, the, uh, if, the, if the if the if the licensing, uh, the New York Athletic Commission, board, yeah, yeah, or the yeah. licensing commission, have that that strength of character to look at it and go, mm, because ultimately it should come from the fighter or from the representation yeah. of the fighter, shouldn't it? Well, I think it, I think that it's now been presented to the to, to the New York Commission. They have presented it like right. the case to him to say, listen, do you think? It, He's yeah. okay to fight or not. Now it's, the, so and then it's in their they'll hands. They'll have to do a statement. If he wants to fight, yeah. they'll have to do an assessment, won't they? Absolutely. And, well, I think you just, you've only got to look at the backlog of the, the, the behaviour and you go, I mean, this kid's not right. Mm. And, it, they, you know, it's not just one or two tweets. Now, this has been going on for a while and he's been on there, he's been drinking, he's right. been smoking, whatever he's smoking, and, like, he's crying, he's breaking down. You go, is that the actions no. of a kid going no. into a, a super fight? Come on. Right, Spence. So that's it for episode 65. You have a successful gym to open tomorrow, don't you? I do, mate. I do, yeah. We, um, Duffy Boxing Centre, we are opening tomorrow. Myself, Johnny Nelson, good luck. Kieran Duffy and whatnot. Good. I'm, I've, it's in the balance yet whether you're turning up or not, isn't I'll it? I'll do my best. I'll okay. do my best. If it, if it yeah. means I can spend some time with you, then... No, I won't be! <laughs> <laughs> right. right, that's it for episode 65. See you next time we're out.